And you guys have over 170 million users of Wi-Fi map worldwide. 175 million to be exact at this point. <laughs> that's crazy. Like that's that's really successful. That you're not just like some small project. Like you guys are huge. Welcome to Steady Lads. In this episode, I talk to Den from Wi-Fi Map. Wi-Fi Map is a really tiny crypto project you've probably never heard of, but they have over 170 million active users of their project worldwide. On Apple, they have almost 30,000 reviews alone. Their goal is to enable free Wi-Fi globally, and they already have millions of hotspots worldwide. We always say in the crypto space, we wanna build apps that people actually wanna use. Well, here's an example of a deep end project that has done just that. This is a really great conversation. Den is a genuinely really humble guy, and we dive into what Wi-Fi Map is, their vision for the future, their token Wi-Fi, and so much more. Can you start by just introducing yourself? Absolutely, I'm Dennis. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Wi-Fi Map. And for the past 10 years of my life, Wi-Fi Map was my world. And hopefully it will be for the next 10 years. <laughs> Can you briefly explain what is Wi-Fi Map? Wi-Fi Map, so the original premise of Wi-Fi Map was to help people worldwide find venues that offer free and accessible internet. Uh, approached it more from the uh, social standpoint where we viewed internet uh, as a fundamental rights for anyone. And uh, we decided to take crowdsource approach to building this database of free and available Wi-Fi's worldwide, where anytime one of our users was in Starbucks or pizza place, with two clicks of a button, they would just add Wi-Fi to the map and make it available to the rest of the community. Over the years, we've built an ecosystem around that product where not only we guide people to free Wi-Fi, but we make it a secure connection for them by offering VPN functionality. Uh, in addition to that, uh, anytime there is no Wi-Fi available or one doesn't want to be jumping from one Wi-Fi to another, we started offering eSIM data plans and now we offer them in over 80 countries worldwide. And there's just uh, offline maps are part of our product as well where we allow people to save Wi-Fi hotspots ahead of time prior to traveling, not to encounter any roaming expenses and so on. So it's a pretty extensive ecosystem at this point. And, and how does crypto play into Wi-Fi map? So uh, since the get-go, it was kind of a decentralized approach where community was the one that's, that was building the ecosystem. And uh, we were using uh, points as measures of rewarding people for, for their activity. That was prior to crypto being mainstream and so on. And... Uh, it was just a perfect, perfect fit for us to start rewarding people for their activity via tokens. Uh, so we introduced a utility token with a pretty simple and straightforward approach initially, where we want to we, we want to further incentivize our crowdsource by rewarding people with the tokens, as well as we give them an opportunity to redeem those earned tokens on the eSIM data plans within our app. So one doesn't need to spend money on expensive routers or any hardware. He doesn't have to be super geeky. Uh, he can just go with his life, go into venues worldwide, eat, enjoy life, and then add Wi-Fi's. Those will bring them uh, utility tokens and then um, they'll, they'll be able to purchase anywhere from 1 to 20 gigabytes worth of data with those tokens. So essentially eliminating the need for the mobile operator altogether. And you guys have over 170 million users of Wi-Fi map worldwide. 175 million to be exact at this point. <laughs> that's crazy. Like that's, that's really successful. You're not just like some small project, like you guys are huge. Yeah, so we've been doing this, like I said, for the past 10 years, and uh, we translate it in, in, a, in almost 70 different languages. We're available worldwide. Anytime, most places of the world, you go on Google, you type in free Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi map, is, is going to dominate that space both app-wise and website-wise. We have a number of other websites under our umbrella. So we, we work with organic travel. 
on Google Play alone, we're sitting with over two and a half million positive reviews, and uh, we're just getting started with this. You said two and a half million reviews? Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. It, it, people are just using this because they're like, hey, I maybe they don't have data on their phone or they're just what is the main use case of uh, people using it for? So, so it actually varies uh, anywhere from um, Wi-Fi only devices, limited data plans, uh, people in roaming, um, teenagers just sitting on their parents plans and uh, that that list just goes on internet became a major part of our lives uh, i mean all the crypto stuff and technology stuff that we all develop is great but unless there is an internet connection all this just is useless so we see it as a foundation uh, level for for any for any connectivity needs for any work needs, entertainment, and so on. And what's like the, or is there like a big vision for it, like long term? Like, hey, we believe that, like, by having, you know, this Wi Fi free all over the earth, it's going to enable such and such use cases, or, you know, could, could you go into that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, the vision is, is big and it's, uh, it touches upon numerous verticals. Uh, when we discuss connectivity, in specific, then our objective is to to solve a problem, right? It's very straightforward. So a problem here being that one requires an internet connection, and to them, it's it's somewhat irrelevant whether it's presented via Wi-Fi, uh, helium hotspot, LTE, 4G, 5G, as long as you can get me connected. So I bring this, we bring, I should say, this huge demand side of millions of users that are looking for internet connectivity. And currently we solve that problem by giving them the uh, eSIM data plans and the Wi-Fi solutions, but it's just a matter of time until we start integrating guys like Starlink and hopefully Helium and similar projects onto our umbrella. Uh, just aggregating and the, providing that connectivity layer uh, where this know-how of how to provide this internet kind of stays for a regular user hidden under the hood. It, it, as long as we, we connect them online, they should be happy. So that's, that's as far as connectivity piece goes. And then uh, we've developed, by building Wi-Fi map, we've developed one of the most complex uh, crowdsource engines within Wi-Fi map and where uh, every single user has some, like a reputation score behind them, every single hotspot has a scoring system behind it. And we're now in the process of uh, applying this crowdsource engine to other verticals for, for travelers worldwide. Um, we call them essential travel amenities. And those can be anywhere from like restrooms, water fountains, uh, charging stations for your phones and so on. Basically letting community, empowering them to populate this map uh, with the stuff that they need during travels and, and, the, and the rest of the community. So kind of expanding on that. And then we have obviously, the, you know, very serious plans as far as the blockchain world goes and and services that we can offer to other projects within the blockchain. I can speak on that as well. This reminds me a lot of like Helium's early vision, except for like what you're building is actually useful because they were doing like the, the low ran network. I, I forget how it worked, but they had their like network for like scooters and bikes and stuff or whatever. But like nobody, nobody used it where with what you guys are doing, uh, you have this Wi-Fi network, 170 million users worldwide. And it's incredibly useful. And there, I think there are a ton of like use cases you could enable. Like if, if everyone could access Wi-Fi at all times, there's just like so much more you could do. Um, and I feel like that would change like how apps are developed. That would change a lot of things. Um, but I was thinking on the other side of things, Comcast must hate you guys. <laughs> do you, have you guys ever got any like uh, had any issues with some of these um, companies? No, no. We actually, without mentioning the name, but we we were partners for for over three years with the major United States-based telco company, who was 
buying these uh, Wi-Fi hotspots and their locations outside of the United States for their customers. Uh, in reality, um, Comcast and similar companies, they're very limited in their footprint. They only offer portions of the United States where we kind of position ourselves as a global solution. And uh, we're not really interested in like home Wi-Fi's or Wi-Fi's on the 12th floor of some building. We're really going after uh, the ground level venues. Um, and it's a huge benefit to the venues as well because people are not just coming to connect to Wi-Fi, but they actually it's it's a it's a funnel that converts them into customers. They're gonna buy a bagel, they're gonna buy that pizza slice, and so on. So it's a it's a win-win situation for a lot of players here. And with time, hopefully, uh, through our business development efforts, we'll make deals with similar guys like Comcast, where we'll just allow our users X amount of days of free Wi-Fi usage on their on their locations. So I don't really see it as a competition. I see it more as just additional puzzle that we can input into into this connectivity uh, ecosystem that, that we present to our users. You kind of talked about how the token, Wi-Fi token, is kind of like a bootstrapping mechanism. So essentially, this token is reward token. It allows, uh, it kind of incentivizes people to go set up these Wi-Fi networks and allows you to really expand your footprint. It's amazing. It's like Airbnb, but for Wi-Fi, or Uber, but for Wi-Fi. Uh, and you kind of mentioned some of the other utilities of the token too, like you could pay for some of your services using the token. Uh, can, can you go into like all the different uses of of the Wi-Fi token? Right. So since since it's a, it's a mature ecosystem, we had to be very careful as to how we introduce the token here. So we we approached it pretty gradually. Um, so aside from rewarding the tokens. Um, one of the tabs in our app allows you to purchase eSIM data plans. For those that don't know, those are the new types of SIM cards where in the old days you had to put in a physical SIM card into your phone and now all the new uh, models uh, of, uh, of phones are coming out with embedded eSIM inside. So basically you can switch your provider just on the software level uh, without uh, any hardware changes. And uh, we offer, that's 4G, 5G services uh, that we offer in 82 countries or at the moment, maybe 86, I have to check on that. And we're constantly expanding the number of countries where it's being offered, all major markets. So uh, when you purchase the eSIM inside of our app, one of the options is to pay with your Wi-Fi balance. Uh, so you can just apply. So on, on a, on a bi-weekly basis, we do an airdrop of, to the most active participants of tokens into their wallets, and then it's pretty straightforward with two clicks of a button. You just apply those Wi-Fi tokens towards, towards gigabytes of data, and now you have a, a phone that, you know, that works in 80 countries. Um, and uh, a lot of our users just love it, and we see the number of those purchases just going up through the roof. So it's a very good use case. In addition to that, you can uh, you can tip each other. So like you know, you're somewhere in Nashville, and uh, you're looking for 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 Wi-Fi. You open up the app. You see Wi-Fi next to you. You know, Dennis has added this Wi-Fi a few weeks ago. But it really helped you because you had to check in for your for your plane or whatever the emergency was. You want to reward me? You can send me some of the tokens as a reward for for helping out the ecosystem. And uh, in the near future, we're going to start offering uh, ability to pay with Wi-Fi tokens for all our services, so offline maps, um, VPN, uh, just get a package deal, and then on the earning side will expand ability to to get tokens by participating in crowdsource beyond the Wi-Fi on all these uh, essential travel amenities that I was mentioning. And that's as far as the consumer play goes. Um, but um, we we're very ambitious in our plans. So what, what we're working on and what we're going to be working on throughout this year is is the following. We're going to start uploading a lot of our data onto block blockchain. 
thus allowing other dApps to be built on that by using this data. And uh, one of the first steps that we're going to be doing is allowing, uh, is uploading uh, geolocation data for, for wallets onto blockchain. So if someone wants to, to do an airdrop of tokens to just guys that visited Dunkin' Donuts in the past two weeks or just guys in Miami, they'll be able to tap into it, just extract those wallets and, and award them uh, tokens. And that's just like a first phase and then we're going to start uploading the speed test data, Wi-Fi data and and other POIs, points of interest with the images, reviews. I mean, it's a pretty extensive plan, but the plan is to start bringing this data on chain and allowing others to work with this data and build their solutions by using our data because we have hundreds of millions of, of records going through us on, on a weekly basis. So there's a lot of data and we want to share it with the world. You mentioned that you originally started Wi-Fi Map with no crypto involved and you're doing points. What does crypto maybe uniquely enable for Wi-Fi map? Um, why didn't you just keep doing the point system that you were doing before? I mean, it's a human nature. Uh, if, no, if you just get points, there's only so much you, you're willing to do. Once, once you start getting money into your wallet, whether it's in Wi-Fi currency or Bitcoin or dollars, uh, it's a totally different approach. You're willing to do more. You're, you're taking it much more seriously. And we saw a 200% increase in, our, in the number of our contributors with the introduction of the token. So our, our theory was, was proven uh, by, via participation of all these people. I mean, money talks to answer you short. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, um, I, I'm interested in like, did it work really well with the points? Like, I'm just, uh, like was that enough of an incentive how much did you grow once you implemented the token versus just the points so points was more than enough for a lot of projects but not for us like points what, what were points we uh, keep in mind we, we're a bootstrapped project we 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 didn't get funding from any vcs for our web to stuff as we were bu building uh wi-fi map and uh it was uh, community over revenue all, all the time. Like we, we had the flexibility to just not concentrate on the money part, but to really build out the platform. And, and points were initially just allowing people to have ads free experience. And then when we introduced VPN, they would get X amount of VPN usage for those points. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't, they don't need VPN on their mobile. Uh, a lot of people don't travel that often, but they still want to be part of your crowdsource. They still want to contribute. They still want to build out the network. And and that's where the Wi-Fi token became came came in and was very useful. Where you know we're not we're not forcing like a free VPN or ads free experience on some on someone. If he doesn't need any of that stuff, he can just take the token, sell them on the exchange, get money, buy food for his family. How many Wi-Fi hotspots do you guys have uh, globally? Like over fifteen million. <laughs> fifteen million, jeez. And where is it like most heavily concentrated? So it it comes so. The, the more active users you have in a certain geo, the more Wi-Fi's you're going to end up having in that spot. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, on Android and on iOS, there are two different audiences for most of the apps. It's like that. So on iOS, uh, United States is our biggest, biggest market, uh, followed by Vietnam, uh, Mexico, Brazil, on... Uh, uh, Android, it's Indonesia, it's India, it's uh, the entire MENA region, so Middle East, North Africa, like Morocco is huge, and it's a matter of, so we, we, we go pretty viral on social media, a lot of people, users just decide to record videos about us without our knowledge, and they post those on TikTok. And uh, at times those get like millions of views. And that's probably where the next boom of users will come from. So uh, they're just popping up. Like we had a huge 
growth out of Morocco literally like a few weeks ago and before that it was Brazil that was just like booming. Um, we we are constantly working on making sure that it's truly a global solution without concentrating on just like one particular area. Uh, what made you guys decide to use Polygon versus like, uh, you know, anything else? So I think the, the, the po Polygon solution was attractive but just mainly because of the small fees. Um, that's what it comes down to. And uh, uh, Ethereum was, was, was something that we were looking at at the time. Um, Polygon just chose, over, we chose it over fees. Right now, actually, we are in very close discussions with the Polygon team because they, they now released their Polygon CDK. And in our case, where we're planning on uploading uh, millions of records on, on chain, I think it's going to come very helpful. So we, we're closely exploring that possibility using that solution. I know a lot of the PIN project went on Solana, and we've also reviewed that as an option, but um, we decided from the technology standpoint, from the security standpoint, and for our needs, Polygon was a much better fit. Yeah, I mean, Polygon's amazing. They're, they're crushing it, and I think 2024 is going to be pretty big for them. For going back to the Wi-Fi token, so like you, you mentioned the utility, you mentioned um, you know it's, it's used as a payments. Long term, like what? Uh, long term, is it sustainable right now, or do you have to introduce more utilities to make it sustainable? Or how, how do you guys look at that? No, it's pretty sustainable right now. Um, what what we want to accomplish is obviously our job is to keep on bringing additional utilities to our users right so this token can be used in a number of places beyond uh, beyond just uh, the eSIM data plans and VPNs and offline maps so it's all part of that biz dev where we constantly looking and exploring what else I'm not uh, I'm very uh, user centric like problem oriented so I, I have number of opportunities where the token can be used unless I see a real value for the end user in that use case uh, I'm not really pursuing those so to me solving end user problems uh, is a is a priority here before any commercial aspects of any partnership goes if it makes sense but we are on a constant lookout for new utilities and new ways and how we can uh, bring all these venue owners on to, uh, to use our token. So what we've been discussing is the following. We have these millions of venues that are displayed uh, on our map and we want to give these businesses opportunity to stand out amongst their competition. So they're not just a pin on the map, but there's an actual logo, there's a website, there's a $2 off, a donut, and so on. And we were, uh, we were looking into allowing um, business owners just opportunity to stake their tokens for standing out on the map. Um, and we feel that will bring additional buying pressure for the talking, will limit the supply, and will do good for both venues and our ecosystem. So there, there are, it's, it's a multi-vertical project that we have here, and it's very important not to, to lose focus because there's just like so much to do, and, uh, and we just like initially I said, I like gradual phased approach. We already have this huge ecosystem with tens of millions of people using it. And it's, uh, it requires more and more thinking, uh, introduction of additional vertical, additional utilities, additional use cases for the, for the tokens. Uh, for the purpose of this conversation, your audience should know that it's, uh, you know, that's it's our number one priority to bring additional utility here and to bring additional value to the token and to grow it. Uh, but everything takes time and we're here for the long term. We're not here for, the, you know, for the next two, three months. We're here for the next 10 years. Um, we have a pretty solid plan. We're all super excited, so we're just going to stick to it.
Yeah, I, with most projects, it's like more theoretical, right? It's like a, we're a crypto project. We could be big one day. We might have users one day. We hope to grow one day. And you guys are coming from the opposite. You're like, hey, we have 170 million users already. We are global. We have all these hotspots all over the, the, the planet. And so you guys have like the hard part already done. Now you're just doing all the easy stuff. So it's like, it's, it's really easy for you to be like, okay, we have 170 million users. We could add utility this way. We could add utility this way, which is, uh, I think, a good place to be starting from. Um, what are you most excited about when it, when it comes to what's next for Wi-Fi map? So I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited, super excited about the fact that we were able to launch the token last year. Super excited about that. It was a very, very time-consuming and stressful uh, part of my life <laughs> and my team's life. And uh, I'm glad we were able to, to launch. Uh, we want to bring more more liquidity to the token. So we're talking to like major tier one exchanges. We want to get listed there. Uh, we we're really looking forward to collaboration with other projects, right? Like I'm part of these uh, uh, dip-in conferences. Actually, we have uh, an AMA session later today. Um, and uh, not only about Wi-Fi map, but overall I'm excited seeing more and more projects that are, like you said, that are solving real problems of today rather than just hypothetical because Throughout the years, blockchain was this something virtual that you can touch, that it's somewhere and it's, it's, it will be used X amount of years from now. Over the past two years, we saw like number of great projects that came about that are solving, starting to solve real use cases for problems. So it's, it's slowly integrating into our lives, going mainstream. And I'm super, super excited just as a techie uh to see all of this coming together we often talk about in the crypto space how we need to build crypto apps that normal people will use and wi-fi map is being used by 170 million people worldwide and so i guess do you have any advice for a lot of these projects maybe that are struggling to attract users because obviously you have done that you've built a, a real business this attracted 170 million users what, what would be the best advice you'd give to some of these projects that are struggling to attract users <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're asking me for a secret sauce for my pizza. <laughs> uh, so I'm a strong believer in in finding the problem and solving it. You know, if if you have to spend, and I believe that all the, the all great things they're very simple. You can explain to them in one sentence. I'm not saying that it applies to all the projects because there's a lot of complexity in today's world, but. Uh, I still look at it through that lens, so to speak. Like, if you can't explain to me what you do in a simple sentence, then chances are you won't be able to to explain it to the end user, right? So, uh, my my advice is don't overcomplicate things. Um, s stay very focused on solving end user problems. Um, don't run after the money before solving those problems. Like solving problems should take priority over over profits, at least for X amount of time initially. And uh, look, I'm a true believer in uh, organic traffic, in uh, in uh, virality, and in today's world with social medias. If you if you identify the problem and you have a solution for it, there's just millions of people who are ready to talk about you, who are ready to, to tell others about your project. Um, so, and uh, just being honest and transparent with your users. And pe people, people see it. Imagine like 10 years in the future, wh what do you picture Wi-Fi map being at that point? We're gonna take over the world one Wi-Fi at a time. <laughs> 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 Look, technology changes so fast. Like we couldn't even imagine ten years ago that we would be sitting here with our token launching, launched, and people using it. It's it's very hard to to look that far into the future. I do see some sort of a hardware component that will come uh, from Wi-Fi map, some sort of a connectivity router, um, 
uh, over the course of the next 10 years. I do see major partnerships here, both in connectivity and travel world. And uh, I do see Wi-Fi map as being one of those pre-installed apps on your phone when you just like buy, buy a new phone. That's my vision. And is there anything I missed? Like I, I tried to ask as many good questions about Wi-Fi uh, that, that I had, but I know you're involved day to day. You know the ins and outs of, of what you're building. Is there anything that's really interesting that we should be talking about that, that we didn't? So, so I'm not sure how interesting, but um, I, I wanted to identify something that a lot of developers are, are facing with right now that a lot of end user of crypto just maybe, maybe just, they're not aware of this. So um, uh, Apple and Google, uh, it's, uh, I don't want to say a monopoly, but it's, it's, their, it's their stores, it's their rules. You have to play by their rules. And, uh, and that's where a lot of limitations for, for the utilities for, for crypto payments and, and similar come into play. Uh, because Apple requires you to do everything through the in-app purchases and so does Google. And that's one of the obstacles that all of us developers are facing. If it wasn't in place that way, then you know all the stuff would be available for our tokens. So, so we as an industry kind of waiting for for changes when it comes to payments on those platforms. And uh, overall, just we we we. We are yet to come in Web3 world to this frictionless experience that we used to in Web2. You know, where you want to purchase something like two clicks, you got it, you know. And, you, and here in Web3, just, it, it just not there yet. It requires, you know, a few extra steps. So I'm hoping to see over the course of the next few years where Web3 becomes just as seamless as Web2. And, uh, and it's uh, available for everyone to use, regardless where they, they live, United States, Japan, Ukraine, and so on. And um, I, I mean, I'm super excited for, for all, all, all the stuff ahead of blockchain. I think we'll live in a wonderful world, or great times to innovate, and uh, uh, I encourage others to do so. You know, I, I think you're right, and I think we're getting there. Uh, as far as like being really easy to use for the average user. I've seen so many advancements over the past couple of years that I think are going to really change the space and make it a lot easier for the average user to onboard into crypto and, and use a lot of these cool things that are being built. I, I did think of a question that uh, popped into my head, which was how much is like, how much are people making running these Wi-Fi spots? So um, the, over the course of the next, last seven months, they've been over 200,000 people that uh, got the rewards. And it varies anywhere from uh, 10 tokens to 500 tokens every two weeks. Oh, and what's the price of a token? So t today the price is 10 cents. Uh, a few weeks ago it was, it was a little bit higher. And, uh, you know, we, we're we're going further. We, we, we want to increase the number of earned tokens. And, and obviously, you know, we don't discuss it, but we're hoping to see. Uh, we, we don't think the price reflects uh, accurately everything we have here uh, in Wi-Fi map. And it's just a matter of time until the, the price will adjust and catch up with all the developments and the size of our community. Yeah, I... <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I stumbled up or why I stumbled upon Wi-Fi was, um, you know, I, I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, why is this, why is nobody talking about this project and it has 170 million users? Like, that's crazy. We go nuts about these projects that like are theoretical. They don't have a product. They have no users. They haven't even built anything. And we're like, okay, that, that thing's worth $10 billion. And then you look over here and you're like, oh, this project, 170 million users, global, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to put that in the lower rung of valuation. It doesn't make sense <laughs> in the crypto space, so. Well, for, for us, the answer, I, I think it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Like when you don't have a product, when you don't have a community, then you have to be great at marketing because that's the only thing that, that, uh, that you concentrate on. Um, in our case, obviously, you know, there's just a lot going on development-wise, community support-wise. Um, 
regulatory listings and so on. Uh, so we have a very small marketing team. We don't really do like paid marketing. We don't do fake partnerships. We, we, our approach is under promise over deliver. And, and maybe that's one of the things why, why some of those projects are in tens of billions of dollars and we're not there just yet. But, uh, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And the world will see what Wi-Fi Map is all about, and we're gonna be we're gonna be beating a lot of these guys. Yeah, I think so. Have you ever considered doing something like um, a buyback and burn? So taking some of your revenue you're generating from the app, and then using it to buy the Wi-Fi token um, on chain to kind of like push up the price. Have you ever thought about that? So we we are doing this on a monthly basis. We cannot, due to legal reasons, we cannot announce the exact amount of the. Uh, of the buyback and, and we can't announce it ahead of time but on uh, on a monthly basis throughout the month we purchase anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of the gross revenue that the company made in an open uh, market and then we have a buyback wallet that's closely monitored by by all the investors and other community members and those are the tokens that are sitting there and accumulating there for the future upcoming DAO, where we're gonna start uh, voting on the development that we're gonna take place, and it's it's a, it's a slow transfer, transformation into fully blown like Web three project. Okay, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I was gonna say it's so frustrating that like because of legal reasons, you can't make these tokens actually useful in so many ways like you know what i mean like that's why we have so many meme coins and like garbage projects to take off is because legally all these good teams can't add in these great utilities that they want to add in because the sec will come after them and so the sec is protecting everyone by making sure that like none of that nobody can act no real value can translate into these tokens and it's very frustrating and hopefully you know one day soon we see that end because it's it's not helping investors it's hurting them <laughs> and um but it, it's cool to see what you guys are building and it's cool to see what you guys are doing with, with wi-fi if, if people want to follow along and and kind of see what you guys are doing and, and building or maybe get started running their own wi-fi spot where's the best place to send them download our app that's the best best way to do it just go on google play download wi-fi map go on uh, iphone's app store download wi-fi map and it's it's it takes you two seconds to figure out what's going on. Anytime you're gonna be near a, a Wi-Fi, we'll give you opportunity to add it. We'll give you opportunity to link it to a nearby venue, and uh, you, you're gonna see the leaderboards of all the people that are actively participating. You're gonna see like a live screen of all the activities that are taking place. It, you'll understand you're not alone in this. There's like an army of people just not non-stop contributing so i think that's the best way to do it and then you can also follow our twitter x as you should say now <laughs> you can follow uh, us on x uh, but uh, on in our apps we do we try to do two three releases a month so it's it's very very intense uh um, and, and you always subjected to these new updates, new functionality, new cool stuff. The best way just to use the app. Well, it's been amazing talking. Uh, I just got to say really quick that none of what we've said today has been investment advice. I do hold the Wi-Fi token, so you should be aware of that. And um, yeah, it's, it's been great talking to you. Do you go by Dennis or Den? I go to uh, but by Dennis, but a lot of people call me Den. So it's... It's like Benny Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I guess I'll call you Den. Well, it's been great talking to you, Den. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see what you guys continue to build. And I'm excited to see in 10 years what Wi-Fi map becomes. If you guys have done 170 million users already, you know, 10 years from now, who knows what you, you guys might. Maybe you're building the next Starlink or something crazy. Who knows? <laughs> we are. We are. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you as well. I wish you and uh, your your channel much of success. I think you're doing great thing for the crypto community, and thank you for taking the time speaking with me.